of me. I'm Mary Dots, uh, N Park neighborhood president. Thank you. I'm Joe Clark, president of Near North neighborhood. Jody Kramer, president of Memorial neighborhood. I'm Bill Young. I'm the treasurer and acting secretary of Memorial neighborhood. Uh, Gary Weber, just a visitor. Penny Weber from SMP. Tina Wick, president of the Gateway Association. Mark Podian, uh, vice president of Historic Grant. Krista Mogalski, police chief. Isra Deutsch, the Southside Beat Officer. Okay, well, welcome everybody. Next item is to uh, see the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, the reason I'd like to pass the mic around is because we taped it last time and a lot of you couldn't be heard. There's another microphone on this table here, so feel free to use either one of them. And um, when we started keeping track of the minutes, we wanted to have a, a real robust minutes that really reflected what happened at this meeting, rather than just record maybe motions and stuff like most city uh, committees do. And it gives us a real record of what we've done over the, the time frame, and so it's nice to look back on those and if people are interested uh, to find out more about what happens at these meetings and the programs, they've got something, uh, some real information there. But we've been recording them with just a voice recorder, and then it takes uh, my assistant quite a while to go through and transcribe it. So now with this system, we can take a video and we can put our agenda out on, on our Board Docs program, and when you go to it, you'll have the option to watch the video or read the minutes. And uh, the minutes are going to be written, are going to be rather short, and the video really have all the content now. So I appreciate you helping with that and just want to give you a little warning that we're filming this. Okay, um, our next item is to approve the minutes from November 5th. Those were emailed out to you, accept a motion. Thank you for the motion and support. Do the minutes need any corrections? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Appro uh, uh, opposed? They stand approved. Uh, tonight we have a feature presentation on the 2019 Neighborhood Revitalization Year in Review, and Chad Pelichek and Nancy Myring will be presenting. So the floor is yours, and please pull that microphone down again. There you go. Thanks, okay. Chad. That's lovely. Um, we'll talk about 2019 neighborhood revitalization and look into 2020 a little bit. A lot of this will be familiar to all of you as we talk about it most every time we meet. Um, really, when we talk about neighborhood revitalization, it's an interdepartmental effort. And I think that's clear to all of you as you've seen and had speakers from multiple departments come to your meetings and really partner with your organizations to get things done. The PD, DPW planning, but also the city attorney, the mayor, and our administrative department. And interdepartmentally, we meet on a monthly basis to discuss issues and items related to our neighborhoods. So behind the scenes, we're really working on the issues that are brought up in your associations as well as things that we see um, as a city team rather than just in our own departments. In 2019, we chose uh, five target neighborhoods, and those are South Calumet, River Bend, River Watch, King Park, and South Lake. And in these neighborhoods, we develop baselines. So our staff from city planning and the beat cops walk all of the chosen neighborhoods in each neighborhood, in each of the areas each year since 2017 to develop these baselines. And essentially what they're doing is gathering data on current conditions in our neighborhoods. This data that will then be recollected in five years so we can have an understanding of how far we've come and what the changes are and if we're making an impact on our neighborhoods. Um, 
the data that they're collecting has to do with building condition and also property maintenance, so landscaping and abandoned autos and that sort of thing. In 2021 will be the first year that we will be recollecting data on our first group of neighborhoods, so it'll be interesting to see how that compares. This is our second round of lighting improvements. If you'll remember back in 2017, we did this as well. Um, our third shift police officers partnered with us for this. They surveyed all of our central city neighborhoods and they ranked each street block and identified the darkest areas in our city where maybe we could need some additional street lighting. Um, if you look at these maps, and it's kind of hard to see because they're small, the darker areas on the map are the darker areas at night. Sometimes it's because a street light was burnt out, sometimes it's because street trees are overgrown, but sometimes it's because there was a light lacking and we identified areas for suggested street uh, lighting improvements, and those areas have been sent to Alliant to see if it's feasible for us to put additional street lighting in those areas. And then 2019 and 2020, we made it a two-year commitment because we learned in 2017 that Alliant has a hard time getting those lights up in the same year that we have the suggested improvements because other things come up for them, and that's okay. Um, we put in over 30 lights in the last time, and there's 53 identified locations in this round. So we'll see how many improvements we get to make this year. We have End Park, who joined us as our 10th association. Um, each, of us, each of you know that as associations, you have multiple things that you each work on on an ongoing basis, year over year, including beach cleanups, um, block parties, your neighborhood plans, informational meetings, that sort of thing. New in 2019 is our large item disposal program, and this was really born out of all of you and other residents requesting large item pickup in the city of Sheboygan, which would have been a huge resource commitment. So instead, DPW created this large item disposal program as an incentive to our neighborhood associations, where neighborhood associations, as you know, could apply to DPW to have them stage a dumpster and a crusher truck in their neighborhood for a weekend. And the neighborhood associations then would provide the volunteer labor and organize the events in cooperation with DPW. And as you can see, I have the tonnage totals. I don't know if you guys have seen that, all of those totals from those events. So King Park collected 3.49 tons at your event, Indiana Corridor, 3.95 tons. Ellis Historic, 1.94. Historic Grant, 4.79. That was our most. Good job. Uh, Memorial Neighborhood, 2.71. Valrath North Point, 1.17. Gateway Neighborhood, 3.59. And Near North, 1.43. For a total of 23 tons of garbage collected those large items, which is a lot, I think. I mean, that's a, that's a lot to think about. Um, they are going to release the dumpster program again for 2020. So I have those applications completed, and I will be attending some of your first, the first meetings this year to talk to your groups about the dumpster program again and hand out those applications. It'll be a similar time frame as last year with the events happening in late April to early June. So it'll be important to get those applications together and get your dates selected. Um, that being said, I have most of your January meetings on my calendar and I'll be reaching out to make sure that I can, either I or Israel or Jeff will be there to hand out the applications for the dumpster program. We had Memorial Neighborhood with its first annual historic walk, and the Valrath North Point neighborhood with their third annual historic walk. We had over 50 neighbors attend each of these walks combined. It's again, the most attended neighborhood event. So we are really grateful to the Historical Society and Travis Gross for his time and his knowledge in these events, because they are huge for our neighborhoods. More Association Achievements was the grant project by North Point Volrath neighborhood. 
they, uh, <coughs> their grant project was to uh, install brochure holders because they get requests for brochures from their previous historic walks from neighbors. So they installed this brochure holder on the side of the shack building on the trail at Valrath Park so they could put their previous walks brochures in so neighbors could pick them up and go on a self-guided historic tour. There's Chad. Um, another achievement was the Indiana Corridor De demolition of the gas station at the corner of 22nd in, in Indiana. And this has been on their radar for years. Finally, uh, the county tax foreclosed on this property. It was a blighted property. The neighbors had cleaned it up time and time again, only to have the weeds continue to grow. And it was a huge battle for them. Once the county tax foreclosed on the property, it was handed over to the city. Um, demolition was completed and site contamination is being evaluated and waiting waiting to hear back from the state as to what needs to happen with that. City development will continue to keep the neighborhood engaged in conversations around what will happen with that property in the future. We had the Memorial Neighborhood Drug House issue, and this really was, I will call it solved for now because things have certainly calmed down, but it was a unique situation that we were in and through cooperation of our neighbors and the police department, it's really been improved in that area. So we are really grateful to the, to the police and all of the time and energy they spent with us in our meetings and working with our neighbors to help us document and understand that problem. The Indiana Avenue Association had an, an issue with abandoned autos and they would be moved throughout the neighborhood. A lot of them were not functioning or they weren't registered. Some of them were dangerous. They they were just a continuous nuisance throughout the neighborhood, and, and Izzy worked really hard to help abate that issue, and that, too, has really been calmed down. So that those were two huge achievements through police cooperation with our associations. This year, uh, Habitat for Humanity had their Rock the Block event in End Park in North Railway neighborhoods. It was three days in September that aligned with the Day of Caring. Uh, in that, there were 14 total projects that were completed and 85 total volunteers. Nine of those projects were homeowner projects that included porch rebuilds, garage repairs, new siding, lighting, and fence removal. Five were community projects, including some projects for RCS Empowers, and then Alley and Streetway cleanups. The city uh, planning and DPW really, and the PD also, we attend many planning meetings throughout the year and we offer resources to Habitat for Humanity to support this Rock the Block event. We held a landlord training this year in November. We had about 25 landlords in attendance and there was an improvement this year. We brought in an attorney to talk about updated landlord tenant laws, which was really valuable for the landlords that we had in attendance. Um, this landlord training happens every year and it's really made possible through a partnership between city development and the Sheboygan PD. Our code enforcement statistics, as most of you know, we have two code enforcement officers in the city. Both are part-time. One focuses on the north side and one focuses on the south side. Um, the housing inspection activity, a total number of violations this year was 1,047. That's only slightly less than last year. The number of inspections that they completed was 670. The average violation per inspection is 1.57, so each property that they're going to inspect likely has about one and a half vi in violations to it. Um, the number of violations that we've had fixed is 951, so that's a 90% compliance which is terrific. We're after compliance. We don't want to send people citations. The number of citations that we've issued is 318. Nuisance complaint statistics, um, a number of complaints is 683. The violations for sanitation, there was 505. Storage, 32. And off-street parking, 128. The number of violations that have been fixed is 533. That's an 80% compliance rate and the number of citations issued here is 101. So looking into 2020, we will 
be installing that second wave of lighting improvements that I talked about. So those proposed 53 street lights, whatever Alliant comes back to us with being feasible to install within budget, we will be installing those in 2020. We will establish baselines for four more neighborhoods. Um, we'll continue the large item cleanup for associations. Like I said, stay tuned. In the first quarter of 2020 is when you'll get the applications for that. Hopefully we'll expand that Adopt-A-Park program. This, um, in 2019, <coughs> Volrath North Point adopted Cole Park. So if any of you are interested in that Adopt-A-Park program, we'll reach out to DPW and connect you with that. Um, the neighborhood grant opportunity, so those of you that have the larger projects that your association maybe doesn't know how to complete or afford, we'll talk about that more in 2020. And we'll continue to partner with Rock the Block. And this year, Rock the Block will be held in Franklin and King Park neighborhoods. So definitely the King Park Neighborhood Association, you'll be in touch with Habitat and, and our department to talk about that. Any questions? If you want to ask a question, uh, Chad will pass the uh, microphone to you. So I just want to start out by saying Nancy said there was 23 tons of garbage collected in its heart. This thing is working. Anyway, yeah, talking to the top of it. It's hard to, t it's hard to know what tons means. So there's 2,000 pounds in a ton. So that's actually 46,000 pounds of garbage was collected amongst you guys. So when you think about it that way, it's a large number and it's a lot of garbage and it's a little bit more impressive than saying 23 tons mm -hmm. because there's 2,000 to pounds visualize. per ton. So if that helps answer anything and if anybody else has any questions, let me know and I'll get you the mic. All right. Thank you very much, Nancy. We really appreciate that program, and it's uh, great to get these year-end reports and see all the accomplishments that were achieved. Uh, next, we'll go on to a neighborhood roundtable, and Chad wanted to give us a little bit of an idea of, of what we're looking for in this presentation. Well, so <coughs> Microphone. What we're thinking here is, you know, usually in these meetings we take a few minutes and each, each neighborhood association gives a sort of a rundown of what they've been up to since the last meeting. But I think what we're trying to get at is maybe a more useful conversation about issues that each of you are having within your association and maybe ways that we can support each other, what you're doing well, what you're struggling with. I think that each association has some commonalities in maybe some struggles like membership, board members, um, getting people to come to events, organizing events, that sort of thing. That's a common sort of issue. So some, some of you deal with those things in different ways and what works for one association might work for another. Some of you might have ideas for one another. Um, so not only do we want to talk about struggles, but things that have gone really well or things that you found to be helpful with your association. So that being said, um, rather than having sort of a round table where we all just say that we met or we are missing two board members, whatever, I, whoever wants to kick it off um, with an idea or a struggle or a question or a success, I think that's, Izzy has opinions on this too. Um, that's kind of where we want to get with this conversation. Well, I am hoping somebody volunteers. Thank you. Hi, uh, Mark again, historic grant. Uh, let's see. Normally, we have trouble with participation. It ebbs and flows. Uh, our most successful way is to put the hangers on people's doors. But that didn't really work for our picnic. We generally can get 20 to 30, we think I think we just got about 15 for our, our picnic that happened in September. And I'm not sure why or what changed, uh, as opposed to our large item disposal. That was, again, hangers. And obviously, you can see by the tonnage, we did pretty well of cleaning things up. Uh, so I, I'm, I struggle to think of what, what we can do to get more people to, to show up. We've tried. Uh, tried pushing things out with email, Facebook, Nextdoor, and 
you know, it just ebbs and flows. It's not consistent. So we don't know what works and what doesn't. So if anybody else has ideas of trying to make sure that we can get continued participation, that'd be great. Um, so that's, that's the only issue I can really think of bringing to the table. Well, one of the things that helped our association a lot is we, having rallying points, things that we, you know, like the gas station, you know, that was a rallying point. Everybody was like, hey, we want to do this. We want this. And that brought a lot of people to our meetings, you know, and, you know, uh, the, the gentleman with the cars parked all over our neighborhood, you know, that was a rallying point that kind of, you know, um, you don't want those things. Some of the things that you have, you know, like the, the cars, we didn't want them in the neighborhood, but that, you know, what, having people being able to rally around, you know, that, that, that brought a lot of people to our meetings. Um, and now it's kind of become, uh, I guess with our, with our neighborhood meetings, it's, they're kind of all become friends. So we kind of, everybody likes getting together. It's kind of that meeting, um, you know, just, just to be able to get together and talk and stuff like that. Um, so I, I don't know if it translates to everybody, but you know, that's one of the things that's, that's, that's what's, what's helped our neighborhood the most. Um, the one struggle that we have is we, we, we be able to keep our board and everything like that, um, is maintaining as well. We, the people that have been the secretary have not done a great job of keeping notes. We don't have a really good record of what we have done. I will say that it's not been very good, but it's so. Sure. I guess I got to speak into this thing. The, the, the outsider looking in is you guys, you know, as we talked about this internally, you guys meet at a bar and in the back room of a bar, Frankie's Pub, and people, you know, come because it becomes a social hour and they like to, you know, some of them like to have a drink, okay, and some of them like to have a soda, but, they, you know, it's I think it's that ambiance and that fellowship and that kind of being with other people and maybe it's, you know, I hate to say it, but maybe it's the bar scene that plays a little bit into it. But, uh, you know, I think it's, you, you've had good results of people showing up where they can socialize and, and meet with their neighbors and have a drink and just celebrate one time and, you know, be on their way and, and everything is good. So I don't know if you, you want to comment about that. I would agree. It, it is, you're right, it is more of a relaxed atmosphere. It is nice to just kind of sit back and, you know, like I said, people don't people don't drink like you know it, it's usually like one beer or something like that or something like, because we like we do like to uh, patronize Frankie's because they are you know giving us the meeting space and things like that but it's not like people are sitting but some people maybe afterwards even after will stay and have a couple beers afterwards after the meeting is actually over with if they want um, but you're right I think it is somewhat that I think it's the combination of things. It's, it's, we have the rallying points. So now people started coming. Well, that's got people to go. And once they started coming to the meetings, then they like I said, we became fr friends with each other. Almost. We, we got to know our neighbors a little bit more, which, which has been a great thing, you know, and you're right. It is more of a relaxed, um, atmosphere. So people like just, just do enjoy that. I go, I don't know why I was off, Chad. Um, I go to a lot of your meetings. So yeah, absolutely. There's this sort of atmosphere of camaraderie at Indiana Corridor that I wouldn't, I don't want to say it's missing from other neighborhoods, but it, it, it it's there for sure. Um, and so I don't, I don't, I don't know that you have to be at a bar to find that, but adding, adding, you know, some sort of social touch to the meetings really makes a huge difference. People relax, they're open to talk. Sometimes it's hard to talk over everyone else talking, but it, it's, if it means that you know you get 20 people to come to every single meeting, it's totally worth trying to yell over everyone to get your point across, I think. It's a fine trade-off. Um, so finding maybe some sort of social touch is, is really worked for you guys. So you can't lose sight of the fact that when we started this 10 years ago, some of the key things that we're talking about is 
just what they've talked about. What we're trying to do is build community. And so community is socially based. We're trying to build social cohesion. That means getting people to identify with common things in their neighborhood so that they have that social relationship. It's really what we've lost in our society as people have become more mobile, so not staying in neighborhoods as much. Um, if you look back in the past, people went to churches in their neighborhood. People don't even go to churches in their neighborhood anymore. They go across town or they, they go someplace else. So a lot of that community and those social connections is, is really lost. We're also trying to build social capital. Many, many of our neighborhoods have certain, um, now I won't think of the, the terms, but really um, assets but, but some of them really don't, and that's why we don't have those social connections. So again, if you go back in history and look at things, when, when somebody lost their job in the 1920s or 1930s or 1940s, the way they found another job is the person down the street was working someplace and knew they were out of work and said, hey, come to work with me and I'll introduce you to the boss and we'll get you a job there. So it's all of those social aspects that really bring people together, and that's really the key of what we're trying to do. We, we just struggle with many of the things that, that you bring up. A, like I said, people are mo more mobile and they move more often um, in, in some of our most vulnerable neighborhoods. Um, people don't necessarily work, work where they live anymore. They don't go to church where, where they do anymore. And then really the speed of life that we live at now people don't have the free time that they normally would. And so I think that's why it's important to, to find that community place where you can get people to meet. So whether it's a bar or it might be a church or a school or wherever it is where people are comfortable coming together and they see it as much um, a, a, as a social experience or, you know, like Dean says, where they, they come together as strangers because of this common issue that they have but they figure out that they really like each other and like to spend some time together. And so they, they make that hour or two hours a month or every other month or twice a year where they're gonna put that time aside to come together. And so I, I don't think that we can lose sight of that because it's, it's really part of the key to it, I think. With uh, King Park, one thing we do really good is we have a really good Facebook page. And we do notice that a lot of people are looking at the page. We're just not getting the people at the meetings. And the only time people do show up for meetings is when they want to complain. So I think people are looking at sometimes association meetings as a place to complain. And if they don't have something to complain about, then they don't want to come. So we're trying to get that mentality out of them that these meetings aren't just for people's gripes and complaints. It's, they're informational and we want people to come. So we are thinking about doing the, the bars and the restaurants like you guys did because uh, Rick and I did sit on one of your meetings and we noticed it's a more relaxed atmosphere. I think a lot of people when they come to the pavilion, they see it as you know stone walls and, and they look at us like, uh, this isn't fun. So we're gonna try doing that once in a while too, going to some of the bars in our area to have our meetings but the biggest thing for us is if people don't have a complaint, then they don't show up. And when they do have a complaint, and if they don't get their answers they want right away, then they don't want to come again because they're like, well, you're not helping us. They think that we're just going to be able to fix something that day. And if we don't, then they think, well, you don't care about us, uh, so why even bother coming? So that's about our biggest concerns. For Memorial, oh, sorry. <clears throat> Um, our attraction now is the hospital, um, and our attendance has been pretty decent, I feel. Um, another issue has been the drug house, which is, you know, on an up and up positive side. But our issue is interest for board members, you know, people that would like to be on the membership. I think our attendance has improved quite a bit. Uh, hopefully it'll stay that way. But um, how do you get people to be interested into the board members? Bill does a wonderful job in putting notes on Nextdoor as well as emails that are sent out. And I have talked to a couple people, oh yeah, I read the notes so I don't really need to come to the meetings. That's what we find. Did you feel that way? So, but. Sure. You were done? I'm done. Oh, okay, done. <laughs> 
Um, I, I thought it was interesting when you talked about um, a rallying point because like we've noticed because we've had a couple of rallying points which have been kind of problems and not good rallying points. We had a drug house in our neighborhood and we've got the ongoing issue of what's going to happen to Aurora Memorial Hospital after they move out to the Kohler area about what we're going to do with that building. Um, but we all have coming up I think all neighborhoods are going to be involved in this, a really good rallying, positive rallying point, in that the DPW is going to be coming to our meetings to talk about the changes to the garbage collection that are going to happen this year. So part of what, what some of the things that we were thinking to get more people to come in is if we really make that meeting as an event type of thing, you know, come, come to our meeting, we're going to be talking about the garbage collection and how it's going to change this year and, and the, um, the containers that are going to be coming in and all of the ways that you're going to be involved. I mean, that's something that directly affects every resident in your neighborhood and I would think that would be something that they would be very interested to hear it. So just as a suggestion to get as a rallying point, um, that might be something that we could all use as neighborhoods to uh, use as a rallying point to try to get more people to come to our meetings because we found that because we've had these rallying points, um, there's always, we, when there's the big meeting, we get a lot of turnout and a lot of people come. 90% of them fall off and don't come again or don't continue coming to the meetings. But there's always a few more that we manage to hook in to keep coming to our meetings on a regular basis. So rallying points are a big thing and uh, it's a good point. And guest, and guest speakers, we've had some terrific guest speakers um, over the past year, and that, that has brought people in too. But the rallying points, kind of hot button topic issues, really do get people to come in. Yeah, these meetings we've been trying to put different programs on that you can ask to have at your meetings and kind of emulate what's happening here. But if you have some good ideas for programs that you thought of on your own and uh, were, were, were good for you, that's something that maybe you can share with the others because uh, having some title topic sometimes will bring people in just because of it. Like. Today we had a meeting at King Park where they talked about uh, the, uh, the project to uh, see what we need to do to shore up our lake shore and, and, and fight all the waves that are coming in. And they had a full house at King Park today for that meeting and it was really neat to see. Sort of piggybacking off of what the mayor said about rallying points and, and what Bill said about them being mostly negative, it, that's true. A lot of times they're born out of you know, a problem that everyone finds in common. But the, I will say the historic walks bring a lot of people out and that's sort of an asset that our neighborhoods have found in common so and that people are really interested in. And I'm not saying you have to do a historic walk, but sometimes it's looking internally at assets that people want to celebrate within your neighborhood and, and that has seemed to bring people out too. We also have some neighborhoods that are testing a quarterly model, and I know that's new, so we'll see how it works. To tr then trying to get a program each month or and trying to get people out every month, maybe you know it's less of a commitment for people to come out quarterly. They're more likely to come out. You can have a more of an event type atmosphere. I think the event atmosphere coupled with a social aspect might be a really good formula and I have my fingers crossed that that's successful. For those of you that are trying that out, I guess time will tell and hopefully that's something that in the future we can talk about at these meetings whether it's been successful for you. The other thing that I wanted to bring up is I think it was near north, it's one of you guys do yard signs and you put out yard signs for events. I, is that near north? Not for events. Did you have better results with it, or? Um, hard to say. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anyways, um, the the big thing with with us is. I'll be honest with you, um, whenever we bring up, let's go hang door, door, door things, I get this, no, I'm not going to do that. You know, nobody wants to do that. I mean, because it's a, it's a lot of commitment. It's a lot of work. And, you know, that's, um, so, so that's the tough thing. So that's why we came up with the yard signs. We did, the, you know, the, put them out. Um, 
like I said, for our hot dog events, um, we've had mixed results, I guess I could say. The, the, our last hot dog event was on a very, you know, the, the day wasn't exactly the greatest, so it's it's always hard to hard to gauge when you have you have poor weather. I mean, it's not something you can always plan on, so. Uh, we've had some of the very same things that everybody else is talking about. Um, participation and just getting people board members. And I think people do like to come to these to have a problem solved. And I feel like the associations should be an extension kind of to help the city and the police to kind of get communities together and kind of be more communities like we're all I feel like we're all strangers like you can't even wave to your neighbor they don't even look at you anymore um, and we have tried to make it a little bit more of a social thing we have ours at Paradigm we only have them once a quarter because I felt like once a month gets to people get to be like geez we were just at a meeting and if you're not solving anything or doing anything people do like what am I going to the meeting for it's not productive so um, we are trying to make it a little more social. I feel like also it takes time. Um, you know, n nothing happens in a day or even maybe six months. It might take a year or whatever to really get, I feel, to get the Gateway Association kind of built back up and, and going. And we are a very business-oriented association, so... I, one of my ideas was to go around and personally invite some of the businesses to our meetings with a little card or something, giving the dates maybe for this coming year so that they're privy to it ahead of time and they might feel a little bit more of a connection and I don't want to say obligation, but like if we've met and had a little chat, they might feel like, you know, like, well, she seemed like it could be interesting, maybe maybe I'll go and check it out. So those are my ideas. I, you know, me and Nancy and Penny and Chad kind of talk about all these, and you guys, some of you guys really hit kind of the nail on the head here, especially the chief talking about, uh, you know, social aspect of it. Keep in mind too, like we, me and Jeff get frustrated as well because we, we really want to see a lot of you guys succeed and you guys really go around and you guys change up the dynamic of these neighborhoods a lot. Um, King Park, I mean, shows one. When I first got here five years ago, there was, you know, when I got here, I went to Kentucky Avenue going, oh man, I moved here. What did I get myself into? Now I take pride in King Park. It's, a, it's an amazing area and I don't think the last time I've been to Kentucky Avenue and that has hand to hand with neighborhood associations working with the city and Rick Gore and Brian and stuff. So, um, we really want to propel you guys to be successful. And some of those are don't be afraid to reach out for resources. You know, Star reaches out to Andrea at King Park on social media advice. You know, I sent Rick to Indiana Corridor because Rick was getting frustrated with the amount of people showing up and just to see the difference of their meeting versus his meeting to get different ideas. You know, invite yourself to their meeting, you know, or anybody else's meeting to see what the difference is. You might hear that Indiana Corridor has 15, but as Dean said, he can't get anybody to do door, door hangers. You know, they all have their ups and downs and frustrations and, and positives and negatives, but go around and, and make those resources out. Another thing, you know, those walks are really important because they really add value to your neighborhood. So when you go around and you talk about the history, people value that neighborhood a lot. So I think really that's why those walks and stuff are, are, are turning out so well because you get the negative that draws and tracks people, but you also offset it with the value and people perceive their neighborhood as being different and more valuable with the information they're given. Um, and not you have to do walks for every neighborhood, but find something that's of value in the neighborhood and, and push that home too because people will visually look at your neighborhood as being different. So I think that's why those walks are so uh, so important and some big turnouts because they value that. So what Izzy was saying made me think of something that we talk about in our interdepartmental meetings sometimes. Um, and that really has to go with the connection to place and the pride in place, but also the transformation that we've seen in our neighborhoods and that each of you really plays a huge role in with your associations. 
We talk about how to tell that story to the public at large and to other city departments and just really celebrate what our neighborhoods have evolved to become and what problems we've solved and how we are building community. Because sometimes it feels like on the day to day, we aren't making a difference. But when we look back at what we've done, it, it is powerful. So how we tell that story, um, we, we talk a lot about that at the interdepartmental meetings. And one of the ideas that was put forward was maybe producing a couple of little two minute segments on a video that could be shared via social media or other ways on the success stories of neighborhood revitalization and have it partnering with you all on telling the story of your own neighborhood and what the what you value and what you are proud of and how you've seen that change happen within your association. Um, I, I met with South High and there's potential for maybe some students to produce those videos and I will be in touch more, but it made me think about um, I guess what you were saying about maybe involving each of you in a production of of, of those as an as a way that you all can share that then with your networks and the city can share that and we can have that as a record of what's going on, but also as a way to maybe tell the our neighbors what's going on. Oh, oh. what about now? I know, like one of the things that. I think I, I, I lament or whatever is, is the like, like the used to be years ago, you'd read something like that, it'd be in the paper. It, it, there'd be an article in the paper, there'd be a community article, this is what's going on, this is what's, we don't really have that anymore. Um, could we partnership with possibly like the Beacon or the Sun or something like that and possibly work with something with them on something maybe? Like, you know, hey, you know, I, I know there has been some stuff with that, but could we get maybe a little bit more because I think I think the more people find out, because I really think a lot of our stuff does not get out there. Yeah. It really yeah. doesn't. I think yes. As a whole, as a group together, I think this is why these meetings are important. Is because each of you could be out doing your own publicity, but if we come together, we can really have maybe a more powerful impact. The sun and the beacon, we can definitely look into it. There might be a cost associated, but we can be creative. We can see what we can come up with. I think we can also carve out, so the city struggles with that same exact thing as a whole, being our own news source, because there's really a void of a reliable local news source here. So how do we do that? How do we tell people what's going on? How do we tell people, you know, and then as a result, we hear false information out there or people don't feel like they're in the loop and then that connection to place is lost in translation. So yeah you might remember in the beacon they took uh, I think our June uh, or maybe April minutes and they they put the whole thing into an article which was really great and it really got a lot of information out about our neighborhoods so that kind of happened by accident just because we had a robust um, um, you know minutes from our meeting. We've been putting something in about the neighborhood associations and Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride in our, uh, our online newsletter, the Sheboygan Insider, but it would be nice to have something like those videos or something to grab people's attention and, uh, and let them watch. Right now, it just goes to the calendar so you can see when the next meeting is in your neighborhood and uh, you have access to the website. So it'd be neat to have something to focus a little bit on. So yeah, Chad suggested Facebook Lives. We could absolutely coordinate that. We have the equipment for that for sure. We can talk to Sarah about, right now she asks for, Sarah's Mike's assistant and she is the communications. The editor of the newsletter. Yeah, she is our communications person in the city. So we could have her carve out more of a corner to highlight neighborhoods. Right now she asks Penny and I for updated information when really we just put, okay, so, Memorial had the historic walk and 24 people attended or whatever the event was. If we can find a way to make that more, I don't know, celebratory or talk about the neighborhoods as a whole or getting people involved rather than specific events, one off, I think we can do some brainstorming on that. So we have various ways. I think we can keep talking about that, but we can try some new ways of getting the word out about neighborhoods and, and what goes on. I don't think people know what happens at those meetings. Okay, 
um, we, at Memorial, we don't have a Facebook page. And um, I hadn't really even thought about it a lot until I heard some of you guys talking about it. How many of you have a Facebook page? Three of you do. So do you, are you also involved in Nextdoor as well? What, what do you find is more responsive to you? Do, do you see Facebook as getting more people coming on and commenting, or do you see Nextdoor? 50-50? Is, 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 is it easy to get a Facebook page started and, and, and start building it up? I, I'm not actually, actually sure how, who started the face. I'd have to ask my, my wife was actually the one. Oh, he did, Chris did, okay. He, I, thought, I thought it was the neighborhood officer, that's right. So it was Chris Steffel, well, he was our neighborhood officer. He started it. So my, my wife's the one that's been running it now. Um, she's been taking, you know, she puts like our meetings and things like that on there. Doesn't, we, don't put a, we don't put a lot on there, I'll be honest with you. We just put on, you know, to, a few little highlights of this is what's going on. We take pictures at our events and you know put those on and things like that. So we try to get that. Um, but yeah, I would say you know next door probably gets a little bit more, but it's I guess it's about fifty fifty. No. The door, the door hangers. You know, re realistically, I I don't know how many neighborhoods I've seen door hangs. I've been walking and do door hangs. I I don't know what it brings in, but I haven't seen anything bring in. It's great information for people. Um, I don't know if they use it or not, um, but I never see them usually come up to a meeting. Maybe one I've seen my door hanger, but other than that, it's really providing information, knowing it's out there. Your social media um, thing is, it, it, it's free to open one up on Facebook. You just got to keep in mind if you do social media, you, you have to have to engage somehow, meaning don't let it be stale for a month and not post anything because people just knock it right off and not pay attention to it. When you King Park's is success, successful because they share things, they post things. You don't have to post every day, but somehow you have to keep that going, that content going. And a lot of their content isn't their own. It's shared from city's Facebook page, other neighborhood Facebook pages, so keep that in mind if you open it up. But um, And also keep in mind for the city or Jeff or I on Nextdoor, some people don't realize this either, we can post on Nextdoor. We can't read messages on Nextdoor though. So if there's a thing going on, keep that in mind. If there's a feud in the neighborhood or something, we, we don't know those messages too. So something to keep in mind because some people don't know that. The, the, we can't read the messages. We can only post them out. Yeah, I'm a neighbor in my old neighborhood, my new neighborhood, and City Hall, so I have three accounts with the, the program. Joe? I just wanted to share a, a cautionary tale with the social media. Um, we set up several accounts in Google Drives uh, when we first started, and the board member who set those up then dropped off the board, and our access to all of that just disappeared. Uh, and it took a long time to track down uh, that information. And I think now Nancy's set it up so that all of the accounts are officially held through the city so that whatever the turnover of the board is, we can always go back to the city to get that access again. That's great. Yeah, um, you, you mentioned something about uh, Nextdoor in the postcards. 
If you have email addresses of people you know in the city, uh, they'll send out as many uh, invites to, to uh, people with email addresses. There's no limit on them like there are with the postcards. And I think every month you get a new batch uh, that, that you can uh, issue with the postcards. This isn't even worth repeating maybe, but we <laughs> joked at our last meeting that it would be really nice to have a fifth board member position on there called Chief Communications Officer. So that it would be a person whose job it would be specifically to handle the communications issues and things like that. But we, we can't fulfill the four board member positions that we have, so I guess that's just a dream to come. Again, my name is Mary, and I'm from the Unpark Park neighborhood. And we were really fortunate to have rocked the block in 2019. People came out of the woodwork. Um, people we didn't even know were, were in our neighborhood. So we gained a few members from that. However, we have also found that through Rock the Block, we really feel that our neighborhood borderline is not correct. We have N Park, which is 13th Street. The people that are really affected by N Park are the people on the west side of 13th Street, and they are not part of our neighborhood. And we have people contacting us saying, well, can we come to the meetings? And I say yes, because you are dealing with the same issues that Bell Avenue, Los Angeles Avenue, and 12th Street are dealing with. Our rallying point, I guess, is definitely N Park. It's gotten much better. Um, after school, it's a problem. I do believe that I just came upon a drug deal tonight <laughs> on my way home. One girl running between several cars. Um, during the summer, every year, there's a new group of adolescents that feel they have a right to rule the park, and they destroy things. And they will just sit there with things and trying to hit the chimney on the shelter, and they're very disruptive. Uh, we've talked, we, that is our main focus, is in park. Again, it's gotten a lot better. We understand that people that live around the park have to almost police it and call if there's trouble. Um, I think a lot of the um, adolescents that are hanging out at that park might live just to the west of our borderline. So those parents, I'm very verbal on um, next door, where I'll say, this child did this and this child did this, and parents, please talk to your kids about our park. It belongs to all of us. I don't think uh, those messages are reaching the people across the street. Um, so, we always talk about the border as being perhaps we need to change it. We have not, in my recollection, we have not had one person from A Street. We have the west side of A Street. We really don't get anybody from 9th Street. It's more people that are concerned about the park. Well, first of all, thanks for inviting those people. I think that's the th thing you want to continue, make them feel part of the group. And, uh, you know, if you come up with a plan later on, we can look at massaging those, uh, those boundaries for mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. okay. Anybody else? And I just want to say that I really like the idea. I wish we had a bar in our neighborhood because <laughs> that would really help. <laughs> we'll um, see what we can do about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'll just open one, but right now we, we've gone, we started out at North High. That North or Urban? I don't even remember. Was it Urban? North? Okay, North, and then we went to the Washington Apartments. The manager let us use their room. Um, there were issues where people felt that they were locked out because you had to have a, a key to get in. So now we moved to Bethel. <laughs> the synagogue on the corner of um, 10th and North Avenue. And it's really um, an eye opener because those people are in our neighborhood and we've gotten to know them and we have welcomed them into our neighborhood and they have welcomed us into their facility. That's fantastic. 
I think this was a really good discussion. I hope you like, you know, the way this evolved and got some, some good ideas out of it. Uh, I guess I'd like to move, Chad? But before we leave this discussion, um, you know, we're in I would think we're intending to do this every time, but we ask you, we've asked numerous times and we're still looking for, you know, what do you guys want to hear for presentations? What do you want to hear for, you know, things? Where do you want to go? What's kind of like on your dream list? I'd like to see the behind the scenes tour. We went to the Sheriff's Department and saw the Emergency Operations Center. So, you know, keep in mind if ideas come through even not here, but just drop Nancy or I an email on, or the mayor on, you know, places or people or what, you know, what you want to hear from presentations that you think would be valuable to be able to take back to your group or, like, or invite that person back to your group to speak to a larger group as a um, kind of sharing the positive. So, you know, let us know we're always struggling every time the mayor knocks on our door to say there's an agenda that's going out. What is the program going to be? It's like, uh, so if you have any ideas for sure, uh, send them our way. Thank you, Chad. Now we'll go on to the report from Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride. Penny? All right, we continue to work with some neighborhoods that haven't taken that step to be associations yet. We've got Franklin Park, Keeney Park, Erie Hill, and all of those have a small core group of people that continue to come, but we haven't been able to grow it. In Keeney Park, we thought we would actually go out into the neighborhood in twos, knock on doors, introduce ourselves, tell them about next door, our neighborhood meetings. We had great conversations one-on-one -on -one with these people. Unfortunately, when meeting time came, they didn't come. So it's, it's frustrating. You don't quite know what it is that you need to do to get the people to come. But yet, the small group that does come participates and is genuinely interested in what's happening in their neighborhood. So it's, it's not lost time being there. And I know in the beginning we said 12 months and we would be in association. We reevaluated and realized we're not going to quit on those groups, that we need to continue with them. We're building them up. So if you start out and you tell them, all right, we're going to have three meetings, and in the fourth meeting, I want you to step up and you tell me what you're going to do to make your neighborhood better, it's not going to happen and you're going to lose the people. Instead, I guess baby steps. Keep talking to them, and as they grow in confidence and realize that there are some things they can do, it's going to happen. You just have to be patient. We did have one new neighborhood, Cleveland Park. We had a neighbor reach out and say, boy, I'd really like to have a meeting. We had one on the 16th of December. It was just before Christmas. I didn't know what to expect, but we had eight people come and great conversation. We asked them, do you want to continue? And they said, absolutely, yes. So they asked questions about next door and it was just great. So we're going to have another meeting in January. Keep that one going. On the other side, we had South Calumet. Somebody had reached out to us and said, I'd really like something to happen in our neighborhood. So we had a meeting, and the first time we had about 12 people, and they were very vocal. And they said, absolutely, we want to have another meeting. And then the next couple of meetings, they started dropping. We had a neighborhood cleanup. And the only one that showed up were the police officers and a member of SMP. Not a single neighbor showed up. So we sent out an email and we said, any interest here? If there is interest, please let me know, or otherwise we will wait to hear from you. And not a single reply was had. So for the time being, we're going to drop South Calumet. They know where we are if they're interested again. you continuing to uh, develop these. I guess, you know, if you look at the work that's been done by Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride, you're all the children they've raised and they're still trying to have a few more and I think that's great. 
I, I have a microphone, but I just want to say, Penny, is you know, congratulations on the work that your group does, and it's you know, it as the mayor said, it's it's beneficial. I, what I would say is, if there is some of those groups that you know are kind of floundering, you know, invite them to these these groups and let you know. And if they came, you know, if there was some new people in the audience that wanted to learn from this, and they were from you know, potentially an organizing um, neighborhood, and they hear kind of the benefits of what. Um, granted, we all have frustrations, but they hear some of the positive stuff and some of what's going on that might push them over the edge if they're just lingering there. So I think you know, I this is a public meeting, and anybody can come. You just don't have to be an association to be here. And if there's a topic on the agenda that makes sense, you know, send it out to them and encourage them to come to this public meeting. I agree. Our first focus is the leadership of the groups, and we want you to be successful, and that's why we're, we're meeting. But uh, we, we've got plenty of seats left for more people if you want to invite people to be here and, and take it in as well. And that might be training a few future leaders for your group, and they might take that step to, to take a little bit more of a leadership role. So, yes, Steve. And I guess I would also echo that um, as far as people, uh, like when um, King Park uh, came to our, our neighborhood, if, if, if anyone wants to come to Indiana Corridor, um, and just um, our, our, uh, our meetings are usually the um, second Wednesday. Um, but if check, check, check in with me otherwise, give me a call or yeah, email me. I'm, I'm, uh, my, my email is with the, with the city for the, as, as all the person. Um, also, if you'd like me to be at one of your meetings, um, invite me. Um, uh, if, if it works out the, that month, maybe not the, the very month, but somewhere along the line, uh, I'd be happy to go to your meeting also. Thank you very much. So the last item on the agenda is our next meeting, which uh, we're planning for March 3rd. So please uh, save that date. With that, I'd entertain a motion. Oh, one more. Before we adjourn, does anybody have an immediate immediate need of a speaker. Is there something that somebody would want or an idea? I don't. I don't, but I'm opening it up to you guys to... No. Go, Penny, see, Penny's got... Yes. We tried for Erie Hill. There is an addiction residential facility going up on North 17th Street, and they were interested because that's their neighborhood. So I invited, I called the lady and invited her to attend. She said she would to speak at the December meeting, and she didn't show up. But I think that might be a good topic. That's something different for the city. Oh, the Memorial Neighborhood had a meet, uh, speaker on um, the air pollution, and there's been some changes with that, so as an attainment community, um, that was an interesting speaker, I thought, and I hadn't heard that group speak before um, on ozone and, and all of that, so that might be an interesting, who was that group? Do you? I have it, I have her sheets at Somewhere. Yeah, I'm pretty sick of the census, but <laughs> maybe in April. Um, I will get the name of, the, of that group, but that was an interesting presentation. I have her name right here. It's uh, Rebecca Dosquenoy or something like that with a 414 area code. She yeah. lives in town, though, I know. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. I have her information here. Okay, uh, all those in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you so much for your time tonight, and hope you all have a, a great uh, winter.